Hey there, comic book fans. I uh, just wanted to take a little look tonight at some comics and talk about some inking. Because I pulled, um, this is Scion. Cross-gen comics. Uh, came out in 2000, so uh, 18 years ago. Wow. Um, and I think this ran from 2000 to 2004 when uh, Cross-gen... Uh, went out of business. I haven't read these since then. And I decided to pull them out, you know, 18 years later or 14 years later, depending on if it's the beginning or the end, and give this series a read because I always liked it. And it's a good series. I've read the first uh, six issues so far. But the one thing that strikes me about it most is the inking and how inking has disappeared from the landscape. This is... um. Art, uh, Ron, uh, who's Ron Mars is writing it. Jim Chung is drawing it. He's still around doing work for Marvel, I think. Don Hillsman II is uh, inking it, and Cesar Rodriguez is on the colors. And look at that. This is some nice, it's a very nice Jim Chung artwork. I think he did an edit. This is the, I, I know he was around before this, but this is the first series I saw him on. And just look at. The, the vibrant light and color they get from this. And a lot of that is from the inking because in this, in this era, the, and I, I also think CrossGen was the first comic book company to get digital coloring right. Uh, Marvel and DC were kind of still in their muddy color era now when CrossGen was doing this nice bright stuff. But the, the, the inker is still defining the lighting in comics. You can see he's got blacks. What you'll see throughout this whole thing is spotted blacks. And what spotted blacks are, what the inker does is he figures out which areas should have black in them and decides which way the lighting should go. As you can see, there's a, you know, there's a light above. There's kind of a light shining in there. All, all down here, he spotted blacks to make the light shine up there. And the colorist followed the same the same pattern, but but like I said, the the inker is still you can still see a, a there's a there's a lot of black areas you know black underneath his chin making his face glow a lot and and all this is is in black too because uh, of the light coming from above him and as you can see the inker is still doing thicks and thins sometimes just with an outline in the bright scenes. And uh, sometimes, you know, on the side of a face on this scene, once again, indicating where the light is coming from. So the inker is taking the lead and where the light comes from with the colorist following suit. I mean, look at this shot right here. Lots of blacks in that tunic. Still, since he's bent over, we get blacks underneath him. And some beautiful, the, since this guy's all in the heat, in the color, they went orange for these pages. But, but, but you can see here the, the, the inker is kind of um, uh, uh, controlling, uh, he has a lot to do with the storytelling too. He's, you know, he's putting all blacks behind here to pop him forward. Uh, in order to, to keep the storytelling clear. Once again, large areas of blacks that, you know, set his, um, set his, uh, cape back, his, his clothes back and brings his face forward. He's got a black shadow under the chin here and all this red and orange coloring to indicate the heat. Yeah, some nice... some nice stuff here. And, and, and in reading this, it's, it's very clear. There's nothing confusing about it. Here, here's a nice double page spread. Once again, a rim of shadow across the back here, defining the space. These guys have a lot of uh, black ink in their costumes. The, the tops of them being lighter than the bottoms. Now let me just quick, quickly compare that to the, the chaos. I mean, this one isn't too badly inked, but there's no sense of lighting in the inks themselves. Superman has got 
He's got his arm coming forward with darks on the top of his arm. Why would there be shadows and the same shadows underneath the arm? And that makes no sense in that where where's the light coming from that there's shadows on the top and there's shadows on the... It's just the, the ink, modern inking, I don't have a ton of examples of Marvel and DC stuff, but a lot of modern inking, like there, there's lots of there's lots of blacks in here, but that's mostly silhouette. Then there's blacks down there. They have they have one long Batman black there, but that that's almost a design in there. And why would there be a sh sharp edge shadow there? And all this is just brightly lit. It's a the the lighting doesn't always make sense in modern comics. Here's here's another one. Nice shot of Batman. Um, it's got a little shadow under there, so we know the light's coming from the top. But then it's lit under his. There's no shadow. There's just a slight shadow under his arm. So why is you know? And then there's a little bit of shadow under that light, but no shadow there. There's barely a shadow under there. The inking, the inker isn't doing any of the lighting effects anymore. Once again, a beautiful illustration, but there's almost no lighting in this illustration. It's all just kind of drawn. There's shadows underneath the muscles to delineate the muscles, but that's it. There's no shadow in his boots. How is there that hard a shadow in his muscles, but down here in his boots, there's no shadows whatsoever? Uh, there's a couple of little sh there's a hard shadow right in his armpit under his arm, but the rest of it there's just a little bit of shadow. So it's straight. Th and if you look at the page design, I think one of the reasons that um, modern comics gets so confusing is all the lighting is done by the colorist, but it's effects rather than storytelling. In that, I mean, these are beautiful effects. He's got all these lighting effects here, but it does. But once again, where's the light and shadow coming from there? I have no idea. When there, there's shadows, there's hard shadows in his and the red of his legs, but hardly any shadows in this yellow. And then the rest of it, there's a random shadow back there. The whole floor is lit like it's daylight. Um, it's just strange, and it, and it wasn't until reading these cross-gen ones that I realized that inkers just aren't doing lighting at all anymore. Once again, this is a page that um, you can see the lighting effects that the inker is doing on his face along with the colorist working in, well, the, um, along with the colorist working in these blues. And you can see his, even his, I wish I'll have to find some hair now. Even his hair was kind of like the inker would ink all those brush lines. Now the colorist waves in a couple of li uh, colored lines in hair, which really don't don't have to do with lighting. You know, this is all moonlighting, so we get the uh, a lot of blue colored lighting. But even in here, you can see a little bit. He's got the shadow of his arm coming down on his shirt. He's got lots of shadows in his shirt. His pants are very light, but they, the colorist put some dark blue shadows in there. We get the consistent shadow under this guy's chin because he's hunched over. And it's not even like right there. Boom. Nice, nice, everything's light in the background, all done with color effects. And in the foreground, we get heavy shadows. It gives him a, a pseudo silhouette, not really a silhouette, but just keeps most stuff dark. We have a nice dark shadow back there. His whole back is mostly in shadow. But if we switch over to uh, this, look, there's the wonderful little drawing of the Teen Titans. Not a shadow in there. There's not a, it's the, the anchor is just outlining everything and leaving it to the colorist to fill with color. And as you, the storytelling can get because without without the inker um, making delineating what we should focus on storytelling wise, it all becomes a visual kind of cacophony. As you can see in this page, like um, 
that there's no sh there's shadows on that one flash just because, just to make his costume darker and none of the other figures have corresponding lighting to them because it's it's just like uh, and then there's almost no ink no black ink on this page so it gets very confusing and here's the next story once again he, we get some nice mood here with one picture look at that Look how nice that is with all the shadows on one side. But then we just get some, you know, some harsh lighting from the back. And something like this, the inker is just kind of making scritch scratchy lines. There's no lighting in there either, even though we know we can do lighting because of that. Nice, nice lighting on this face here too, ever so briefly. So I think this is one of the and then we have stuff like this. Once again, it's so many color effects where they knock down the black plate so it's gray. So we don't even get the strength of the black plate anymore because they want some color effect. And in, in here too, lots of color effects right over the black line. Here we, all of a sudden we get one shadow there. But there's... There's no, everything else is evenly lit in one hard shadow. It's like, that, that, that doesn't quite make any sense. Once again, here they leave a lighting of, you, what you get these days are lighting effects. Here's a lighting effect in the color, but that doesn't quite make any sense that, to go with the rest of this. I mean, how, how is that, light, he, he's no better lit than these canisters than this thing right here. So the, the inker isn't organizing the lighting anymore. So without the inker organizing the lighting, we, we get chaos. Like, oh, there, there's one where the inker organized the lighting nicely. Look at that. That's a beautiful panel. And it's a beautiful panel because we got shadows under there, shadows under there. The background is dark. And then we get meaningless shadows here kind of thing. So it's like the, the uh, it's really, a, like I said, the inker's job has changed so much. And I think it's really affected comics, storytelling wise, because there's no one really controlling the lighting. I mean, I know the colorist is doing the best they can, but they're doing more illustrative coloring. The colorist is doing more stuff like making sure to put highlights on, making sure to, you know, they're, they're, the colorists are making things look round. That's what they're doing. They're not um, storytelling with the shadows. I mean, what's the lighting in that panel right there? I, I don't know. It's just all, almost all, there's a little bit of shadow in his pants. Once again, the, the shadows are decorative in his pants. There, there's, you know, what, what, what's the lighting on her face? I, I, there's so much single line weight stuff as opposed to lots of line weights. Like, look at all the... Even though he's using kind of a decorative line weight for some of that hair there, at least we get weight to uh, weight to the lines on top. Different different weight to these little lines in here. But what man, it's really it's really different reading a comic from 17, 18 years ago. And here's the Marvel stuff. Uh, flat. Almost no shadows, just outline drawings filled with color. Once again, perfectly nice drawing. This one's got a little weight to it. I like uh, whoever that is did a decent job, but still not, I mean, there's no lighting to this panel right here. In the, there's all this beautiful line work in here, but it's just, there's no indication of lighting. There's ver one spotted black on her back. Why? Why? Why one spotted black and not spotting blacks on any other part of the drawing? There's a black and white. You can see in black and white. Does that make any sense to you in black and white? No. Without the color, there's no organization to it. This just thin lines. Okay, well, enough rambling on about that. That's just a little, I mean, 
wow, inking has really gone downhill in the last 18 years. I mean, I mean, there's still some well inked stuff out there somewhere, but it's almost like not demanded of inkers anymore to do stuff like this, to create, you know, light and shade with the inks. Now it's just line weight and hope the colorist can do something with it. But anyway, there's just a little look at some old issues of Scion and some fairly new issues of Marvel and DC preview stuff, just to compare and contrast. We'll catch you later.